Hi, day students. So a lot of you guys have been missing classes lately. I have no idea why. So I wanted to make sure that I catch you up on comparative circulatory systems so you can be caught up on what we've been doing in class. So to make sure that we all start off on the right foot, I should probably go over a couple of purposes of the circulatory system. Um, so for our intents and purposes, the three major purposes of the circulatory system are going to be to transport oxygen and carbon dioxide all around the body. Um, to transport nutrients, like for instance sugars, all around the body, and also to help maintain body temperature. So there are two major classes of circulatory systems, and we call them closed and open circulatory systems. Okay, so this is a basic diagram of what we call a closed circulatory system, and it has a couple of different parts, some of which you're pretty familiar with. Um, so closed circulatory systems have a pump, which pumps the blood throughout the system, and then it also has closed blood vessels, um, which keep all of the blood inside them rather than releasing it out into an open space. So down here we have the pump, which in this case happens to be a heart, and then up here this purple tissue is going to be where the oxygen diffuses out of the blood into the tissues, and then carbon dioxide diffuses back in in order to be released back into the lungs. Now this right here is what we would call an open circulatory system. So it still does have a pump, but it relies almost exclusively on diffusion. The blood is then released into an area called hemolymph. After essentially floating around inside the organism, it will ultimately return back to the pump. Organisms that have an open circulatory system do not have blood pressure. Because this system relies almost exclusively on diffusion, these organisms that have an open circulatory system tend to be a lot smaller. Think back to what we did way back in the fall where we had the cubes of gelatin that we dumped into the basic liquid. We could see the diffusion happening because the outer portions of the cubes turned pink. After the same amount of time, the diffusion distance across all three cubes was the same, but the larger cube had only a very small fraction of the cube that had experienced diffusion, whereas the smaller cube had been almost entirely perfused. A large organism that relied on having an open circulatory system and thus relied heavily on diffusion would die before oxygen reached all of its tissues. Endotherms tend to have closed circulatory systems. However, there are some ectotherms that do have closed systems, such as fish and reptiles. Organisms that have open circulatory systems include small ectotherms, such as insects and mollusks. Here we can see the internal anatomy of a crayfish, which is similar to a shrimp or to a lobster. Crayfish are ectotherms, meaning that they take their temperature from the environment around them, and they also have an open circulatory system. If we look closely at this crayfish, we can see its heart right here. We can also see that there are blood vessels all along the back of the crayfish, like this. There's also a small amount along its belly as well. However, rather than having a network of blood vessels that cover the entire organism, this organism relies on diffusion. Oxygen from the blood will then diffuse out into this general area, which is called the hemolymph. If we look at a grasshopper and a mollusk, we can see that they both also have open circulatory systems. Like the crayfish, the grasshopper also has a network of blood vessels all along its back, and the oxygen will then diffuse into the hemolymph of the grasshopper. The clam looks pretty different from either the grasshopper or the crayfish, but you can see that it has a series of blood vessels that cover a small amount of area within itself. Via diffusion, the oxygen will come out of these blood vessels and then eventually make its way back to the heart. Again, remember that all three of these organisms are relatively small. If they became any larger in size, diffusion wouldn't be able to occur fast enough to perfuse all of their cells with oxygen. Although earthworms are small, they actually have a closed circulatory system, which use several small hearts to pump blood around their bodies. Because the blood stays within a series of blood vessels, however, we consider this to be a closed circulatory system rather than an open circulatory system.